Yeah. 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 Nice, nice, awesome. Well, we're just, uh, we'll probably just hang out a few minutes and see who all joins us. So you have some time. <laughs> all right. Getting everything, all your Christmas th things done? Yep, getting there slowly, slowly but surely. <laughs> it's Thank like, you. oh man, Christmas is coming so quickly, it seems like. Right. Oh, why we got a minute? Um, so the you know the Clemente class. Yeah. So um, I'm having, I'm invited. So I don't know how. Well, anyway, so the Missouri Botanical Garden. There's two people that are going to go down to Oklahoma, and I'll meet them down there. And Kent, I forget his last name or if that's his first name or last name. Uh he is interested in it uh because it, it's corn that was labeled kiowa so apparently oh. they you know they thought it was kiowa corn but on the card it says that um the corn was uh given to them by uh the stecker agent his name was oh. uh, agent stecker uh -huh. And then, then we researched Stecker and how that all, you know, how did Stecker get its name? And it's through that guy. But anyway, so that, <laughs> but so this is going to happen February, um, let's see when, February 19th, I think it said. So uh, Kent, I think, is talking to the Wichita tribe because it is labeled, you know, I, it has in parentheses on the card that this is this corn and it said Wichita Indians uh -huh. and it's still labeled Kiowa. So, oh. so I know. So they'll put it in their notes, you know, they're going to change the card, but they can't, you know, change the label and all. But uh -huh. they come down and talk to everybody and uh, talk to the elders if we can get um, grandma, you know, Dolores and uh grandma d and uh, uh aunt velma you know and just try to so anyway so kent i think was working on asking the wichita's if we can use their uh facility uh-huh so um let's see and that was gonna be that's what i was looking for was the where is my phone there it is so they're going to bring it with them they're going to bring their corn and they have a lot of corn you know like uh i think they said like 25 ears and oh, they're wow. all uh they're all different corn uh -huh. uh, and they're also named binger like yellow binger red binger corn so apparently it must be coming it was coming from the north uh the north end of Anadarko, so north of Anadarko, that's what it said. Oh, so, which sounds like Wichita. Well, yeah, that's territory. what. <laughs> yeah, and um, so they're bringing their corn. They want people to look at it, you know, the Kiowas and all that. It's kind of interesting, anyway. Uh, but anyway, I want to, you know, let you know. And I'm trying to look for my calendar here. There it is. Wow, that is interesting. When when is that? Did you say February nineteenth? Oh, okay. So, um, like I said, I'm trying to work on it during the Clemente class and trying to get you know uh, somebody down there, which is Kent, you know, to get which is involved. Uh, uh, there was a uh, Amy. Is there an Amy that works for the Wichita Civil War? Yeah. Or uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, so she works for the Wichita tribe. So I don't know. It's becoming a big thing. So because wow. uh, the Pawnees want to see the corn. 
<laughs> like, oh, uh-huh. uh huh. So yeah, if you want to, um, if you know, I'm asking for your help. <laughs> you know, sure. as far as, uh, help facilitate. You know, talking or you know, with people or and it's only two people that are coming. But yeah, you know, that that's yeah. Just uh, you know, as long as I have a heads up as far as when it's going to happen, then I can clear my schedule with work and all of that. Well, February nineteenth is the mark. February nineteenth. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll write that down. And wow, you exciting. know where and when? Uh huh. You know, I don't know about. Do you know anybody that would be able to facilitate, uh, like corn soup, fry bread down that way? Um. Yeah. Uh, meat gravy. Meat gravy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so are they thinking like doing like a cooking? Like, do you want to have a meal and have like a cooking demonstration or like? Well, uh, no, I'm just just a little meal, just something to you know show them what we do with the corn, you know, because they yeah. have corn soup before. So mm -hmm. just uh, give them a little. Um, something like that you know because you know i don't even know what they're going to talk about i mean you know or how but the the botany people from the pawnee and at the pawnee or ponkas one of the two i think it's pawnee aren't they kind of like real close to wichita people is it the, the pawnee is the pawnee <laughs> so yeah that um so the Pawnee are um, interested in seeing this corn. So, and it's from 1914. Oh, wow. And, you know, I was, that was neat, but the neatest thing was finding out who Stucker was, you know? Yeah, wow. That is a, uh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I know, I know. <clears throat> And, and so it's like, what is it like, uh, what is that called? Uh, heirloom corn seeds? Is that what they're, is that what it is? I don't know if they call it that. They're calling it just Kiowa corn. Um, I know that our botanical garden here has, they took me up in their storage area and they have every plant, the leaf and the stem from every plant in the world. And I was like, whoa, you know, and then she took me over to where the uh, supposedly, you know, where the Indian uh, plants were and all that. So uh -huh. they're just now starting to, um, <laughs> I guess, put this in a museum and label it right and all that stuff. Right. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I get myself into some <laughs> stuff like that, you know. <laughs> oh well uh, that's awesome i'm i'm kind of curious if like uh we can think of anyone who I, I know we've talked a little bit about kiowa ethnobotany a little bit like in our sunday sessions mm -hmm. and i'm wondering uh if there are any like current if there's anyone we know of that would be kind of like uh i don't know if an expert or just someone who knows about that type of you know the the plants and the foods and stuff that we use. Right. I don't know. Do we have a Kiowa that does all that? Uh, let's see, Grandma D. <laughs> do you know or Miss Brenda? Do you know of anyone that uh would be knowledgeable about Kiowa plants and food and all that? No, I, I don't. I can't think of anyone. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I, I don't either. I'm. It's it's like we should know someone, but <laughs> I think that was there a book that was published yeah. that had all that there in was. it. Yes. Yeah, there there is a book, um, and maybe we could look at who um, who like who the informants were for that book because I don't think it was written by Kiowas. I think it was like. Uh, right like some Informant. anthropologists right or right. ethnographers or something yeah. um let me let me see if i can pull it up on the screen okay do you think dr bill might have a reference to it dr meadows you know that's a good question he might he, he i know he kind of keeps uh tabs on those type of things 
Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to look for that document, uh, because I know we've, we've looked at it before. So let me, I think it was called ethnobotany or, uh, let's see. Uh, the bar notes might note might have something also, but that might be another thing to look at. Um, do you remember the book? Did you say there was a book, the Kiowa book? She, I thought she even brought it up, and I took maybe I took a picture. You did. I did take a picture. Hang on a minute. Oh, cool. So Indian perfume is not indigenous to Oklahoma. Oh, interesting. Where did it come from? Europe. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> That's interesting. Because, uh, yeah, they did, you know, I mean... <clears throat> So yeah, they had to, they had all that down, but they didn't have, let's see, here it is. Here, let me uh, share my screen. So, really. Or do you want to share your screen or do you want me to share my screen? I found no, the I have uh, anything to share my screen. It's on my phone here. Okay. I'm just going to read you the book, the economic. Okay. It's called the economic botany of Kiowa Indians. This one right here. Uh, yep. That's it. So Paul. <laughs> Paul Vestal and Richard Schultz. So let's look and see if, and this was in 1939. Um, let's look, 1939. That's like so long ago, it's like almost a hundred years ago in another like 17 years. Um, okay, let, let me, I'm gonna look and see if they have any like names here of people like you know maybe we could talk to uh the descendants you know of the, the people who were the informants uh let's see so this is all there okay acknowledge it let's see. Uh, okay harvard apparently <laughs> harvard uh, labar are oh okay are. so that's that's a clue we might be able to look in the labar notes because we have access to all those alice marriott okay yeah and uh oh. they don't they don't they just have indian friends oh <laughs> no <laughs> names Vega. Oh. well maybe they would put names in there if it, you know i don't know let's I see didn't read the book yet so i don't I was she just told me about it. I'm gonna put it on one page so we can like quickly look at it as a full. I just want to see if they have any like names. So it looks like they reference Mooney. So of course this is written in 1939, right? So it's it's only up until that point. I, I think that there was uh someone did a dissertation. Uh is it that Michael Jordan person that might have did a dissertation around Kiowa botany? No, he did, he did it on on the descendancy, their groups. Okay, okay. Who I thought somebody did a dissertation. I think the uh, I feel like there's another reference that we can look at. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to look here to see if, uh, doesn't that bar guy, uh, do the, he did the peyote, um, uh, book in it. William I Barr. Think, I think, yeah, Labar did the, um, yeah, Labar. Labar did the, uh, he has those Labar notes. Oh my gosh. It's converting everything. Okay. So what it's doing right now is it's, uh, converting the PDF to, recognizable text so it can we can search the document because i want to search for corn like to see if 
if there's a corn. And let me stop sharing while it does that. Uh, there's Grandma Martha. Hi, Grandma Martha. Hi. Kind We've kind of there. just uh, unofficially, we were talking about, we just kind of hanging out, waiting to see who's going to join us. But oh, okay. uh, Kathy has a, uh, like a, a request for us or a update or news to share. Kathy, do you want to go over that really quick? I think uh, Ms. Rinda may have caught the tail end of that also. Um, so the Missouri Botanical Garden over here in St. Louis uh, just what, was doing their inventory of their things that was in storage and they brought out this uh, corn that was labeled Kiowa corn but on a label when it explained it it explained that um, the corn was given to them by um, the Indian, uh, Indian agency um, Stecker is his name and they said the corn and then they put in parentheses Wichita Indians and then they said north of Anadarko so they have to, you know, so their corn is labeled Kyle corn and there's no way to change it, but we can request to put a note in the file that, you know, yes, this is actually Wichita Indian corn, you know, cause they're talking about binger, uh, binger blue, binger red and binger yellow. So I thought, is Binger in the Wichita area? Would that be the area of the Wichita's? So these two people are coming down to Oklahoma February 19th. And we're trying to get, um, Kent is trying, and he's from the Thursday night Clemente class, the Kiowa class. Uh, and they're trying to um, get the Wichita's and Wichita's are interested and the Pawnees are interested in this corn and they want to see it. It's 1914 and, um, and they want to see the card. Uh, but yeah, so we're trying to get the Wichita's to host the, you know, or give it, let us uh, use their um, facility to, you know, to, to meet these people. And I was putting an invitation out to Melody and everybody, you know, the elders. Uh, so I'm trying to orchestrate all this from here. And I was hoping that, you know, I can get Melody or somebody to help me uh, get some things done as far as, you know, when they do come down. And it's just going to be for a couple hours. It's not going to be all day long. It's, you know, just the, it's, it's corn you know so there's not too much to talk to them about it but i'm sure they have questions and uh so that's what i have going so everybody's invited whoever wants to go when did you say this was supposed to take place this uh, is brenda February 19th is I'm trying that I'm, I nailed down the date and I told the two over there at Missouri Botanical Gardens. So um, apparently they're just waiting for me to tell them what to do, you know. So when, now I'm waiting for Kent to tell me the mm -hmm. if he can get the Wichita's. The Wichita's are interested. So, yeah. you, you know, he said that it shouldn't be no problem at getting the facility there. So that's on a Saturday. Sorry, I had to go grab a drink of water really quick. That's all right. And then I need the head count, you know, like who's going to go. So, you know, we know how much 
because I was going to make have uh, corn soup made with a little fry bread and, and let them taste, you know, because they didn't even know about corn soup. So, wow. Well, we'll have to uh, kind of do some thinking together to see what uh, you know what we can do to help you out. Let me look at uh, this PDF should be done, but okay, here it is. Let me share my screen again. Okay, uh, let me make this bigger. So when I searched corn, this is what comes up. And I'm looking to see if, I can't tell, I guess, uh, not sure really what I have to remind myself of how this is organized, but. Oh, so they use the shuck to do the cigarette wrapper. Yeah, for the, uh, and then in the Native American church. Right. Um, so. So Native American church, normally there's corn served, right? Right. So when, I forget when that started, the Native American church for Kiowas, do you remember? In the uh, 18, was it the 1880s, 1890s, 1880s maybe? It was like around the time that we, around the same time that the ghost dance started, which was like 18... 80s maybe okay yeah and christianity yeah christianity. yeah <laughs> yeah because it's a newer you know it's a newer but so we had corn did we have corn back then i mean as was that one of the original foods that we would have ate um in peel you know in the in the Pure, yeah, I, yeah. Think it, I think it was considered one of the original just because so this it says so it looked like this this year right here that so these years are like the the um the year that they can trace uh Kiowa association with this plant back to so corn the knowledge, at least these guys, you know, whatever their research, you know, uh, whatever they did says that uh, corn was used among the Kiowas since 1753, but um, it was part of the peyote, the Native American <laughs> church or peyote meetings. Um, as far as I know, since they began, but I mean, because they well, started relatively recently, you know. Oh, well, you know. The cigarette wraps pings are used in the ceremony. Yeah. So they're not actually saying corn itself was part of the ceremony food. But right. there's aside from the food, from the value of food. But so did the Wichita's, are they Native American church? No, really. They were yeah. ghost dance. They did the ghost dance. Hmm. That's good to know. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the Wichita's, but um Well Kent was saying something about the Wichita's used to make our stuff for 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 peyote uh for our peyote food. And he named a person, so yeah, that, that's what you know so this is just um, a meeting that we're just opening up a conversation on ethnobotany of the Kiowa you know uh, and probably of the surrounding uh, area where we had to let you know 
uh -huh. uh, what foods that we trade and all that stuff, you know. <clears throat> Right. So it's just an education thing, you know, and maybe you can fit that into your curriculum uh, melody for February, you know. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. So we can kind of talk more about plants and corn and food and that type of right. thing. Right. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I mean, if I have to make the corn soup here on It'll take me nine hours to bring it up here, but we'll have it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we can find someone in the Anadarko area that would be willing to help out. Um, I know Aunt Mary Lou does a fantastic job, but she's just getting older. And I'm just, you know, I would ask, I, I probably should ask her first. <laughs> see if she would do it, and then I'll go from there, she says. Okay. Yeah. Just um, let, you know, let us know. I'm looking for, I know we talked about another, like this, like ethnobotany type plants. Um, I'm kind of curious what the Labar notes say about that. Well, he has a whole book. Um, well, it's on peyote, but it's about the peyote religion. So he must have, he might say something about corn and that. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm looking this I'm looking in the Labar notes to see mm -hmm. if there's any reference to mm -hmm. corn specifically. And corn isn't coming up when I search it. There's a lot of reference to peyote, of course. Oh, this is um it's called Peyote, Peyote Cult by Weston Labar. Oh, okay. I have the book. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking to see if it says anything about corn. Well, I can do some more searching. Um, and kind of see what, uh, if there's anything else that would be, that might be helpful to you. Right. But that's, that's really interesting. And if we think of anyone you might reach out to, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny because my next semester, I'm taking um, Native American ethnobotany. Oh, really? Yeah, that's kind of all strange. So we're just going to go with it, you know? <laughs> wow. See what it all comes out with, you know? Maybe I can do my notes on that too. And that'll be my research for that class, you know? Well, there you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a good tie-in right there. <laughs> <clears throat> all right um well i guess we should um get started with our agenda um so let's see i see we have so we have miss brenda we have grandma martha we have grandma d and we have i think is aunt carolyn with you uh, awesome and then we have kathy and then we have the zotai family join us so welcome um and let's see um drama martha nell are you able to um can you uh pay dots i okay um, you don't <laughs> they don't huh Oh, 
Patel, que é a droga, get, going to Sanma. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us in keeping our language together. Um, we also ask uh, for your help at this time of the year when people are beginning to become ill. I'm hearing of a lot of people becoming ill. Um, don't know what it is. It might be a mixture of stuff. It might just be the flu, but ask that you be with those people and also for the um, people who are out in the weather, who are homeless. Uh, we also ask that you um, watch over everyone who is still having to be out there in the work world and traveling. Um, as for traveling mercies to get them around so that they might enjoy their family for the coming season. We also say thank you for everything that you provide for us. All this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh ho. Awesome. Um, <coughs> let's see. I'm going to pull up our little agenda. Um, let me make this bigger so we can see it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Um, so for today, um, watch this is the wrong date. All right, so what we wanted to do was I wanted to talk a little bit about Kiowa grammar, uh, nouns, pronouns, and verbs. Um, and then for our Kiowa pedagogy discussion, wanted to talk about strategies for teaching Kiowa language with middle school students. So sixth through eighth grade, like 11 to 13 year olds. And then uh, for practice time, if we want to, um, if we, you know, if people want to, um, we don't have too many on tonight, um, but if we want to use breakout rooms, here's some of the ideas. Um, so I don't think we'll have an evaluation room, but we can definitely do some practice with the nouns, pronouns, and verbs. And then there was also interest from our elders, our mentors, to look at the one of the Kiowa Culture Program recordings on Kiowa Proverbs and do some translation. So we wanted, I wanted to set aside some time for that uh, as well, just to work on that. Um, so how does that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> um, okay, so um, to kind of start thinking about Kiowa grammar. Um, so that's kind of a, can be kind of challenging to think about because we're so used to thinking about grammar in terms of like English, English language. And so with Kiowa grammar, we really have to kind of focus on how can we uh, think in Kiowa um, and how we can really um, understand the different uh, purposes of the different parts of our Kiowa speech as we're talking with each other and how we're communicating. So um, with that, um, as far as Kiowa grammar, so there are some resources out there to help us like uh, try to figure it out, especially those of us who are second language learners and trying to learn uh, Kiowa as a second language uh, with you know English being our first language. So the first part is you know accessing resources that are available. And the second part is really um, focusing on kind of turning off our English brain and trying to really turn on our Kiowa brain and try to think, think about um, how we communicate in our language in Kiowa. Um, so I'm going to, um, so uh, some of you who may have gone through the Kiowa language credentialing process to become a Kiowa language teacher, you're probably familiar with the uh, basic uh, level of Kiowa grammar, so nouns, pronouns, and verbs. And um, so we want to kind of re revisit those a little bit and think about that. And then also look at some resources that are out there 
that have been developed um, by the Kiowa Language Credentialing Board um, that could be useful to us as we learn um, and kind of study and uh, figure out um, how we can really uh, communicate in Kiowa. So um, one of the uh, best resources, um, let me open this up. One of the best resources to look at is the Kiowa language, um, Kiowa English student glossary. So I'm gonna pull that up. So this is Goitongya Akoitongya Kiowa English Student Glossary. This was um, organized, compiled by um, Mr. Dane Pula, and he uses a lot of sources. So he basically pulled this this glossary as of 2022 is at 918 pages long, and um, He's basically organized uh, the glossary using a lot of different uh, resources from various uh, Kiowa speakers. And so you can see all the acknowledgments here. Um, and so there's also so, a brief introduction um, to kind of the sources for the glossary specifically in case anyone wants to look some of these things up. And the glossary is organized according to the Kiowa alphabet. So I'll go back up to this page here. So this is kind of the Kiowa alphabetical order. So the glossary will be organized in terms of these down. So this is the order that you'll see uh, the Kiowa words that start with this sound. And then this, so aw and oi, ah, i, ba, ba, ba. The, the. So you go and down to the glossary and you can see it starts with all. And every um, entry, it's, it's organized like a dictionary. Um, so after every word you'll find, so you have the first part of the, the first entry here is the uh, modified Parker McKenzie orthography version with the diacritic marks. And then the second part is the phonetic pronunciation. And then you'll see the part of speech. And then you'll see a definition in English or an explanation. So I'm gonna to go to um, a verb here. So this is a verb. So this is the, this is basically the, um, what would you call it? Like the base form of the verb, like the original form of the verb. And so you have the Parker McKenzie, modified Parker McKenzie orthography, the phonetic uh, way to pronounce it. And then you have the part of speech here, and then you have the English definition. And then for verbs, you'll see this little chart. And so this chart uh, basically has, um, this is the verb tense. So another way to think of like verbs is in English, we call it uh, conjugating the verbs. Um, like basically how is the verb different or maybe not different based on the verb tense. So whether we're talking about the past, the present, the future. So those are like kind of the verb tenses that we're used to in English, right? Past, present, future. But in Kiowa, there's also additional verb tenses. Um, there's a command tense, like there's a command, another way to say verb tense is a verb form, the form of the word. There's a command form. There's a negative form of the verb. We also have a verb form, a verb tense called hearsay, which is basically used in storytelling. So it's anything that is spoken about um, secondhand, like you didn't personally witness something or hear something. And so if you're telling a story or sharing, um, you know, something that maybe you you uh, heard secondhand from somebody then that's a hearsay. So you would use the hearsay tense. And then Kiowa also has future, but it's gonna continue forward, like, and we call it continuous. So it's in the future, but it's gonna continue happening in the future. And then command continuous, um, meaning it's gonna, it's a command, but you want people to continue doing it. And then hearsay continuous. So it's a storytelling um, tense, but it's continuous. 
And then there's also a negative verb tense that's in the future. And so not all the verbs will have all of those verb tenses um, or those verb conjugations, but a lot, some of them do. And so that's kind of um, what the verb tenses are. And then in the middle column, you'll see the Kiowa, um, the Kiowa form in the modified Parker McKenzie orthography of that verb. And basically it's gonna show you how that verb changes based on what you're talking about. Whether you're talking about the past, the present, the future, whether you're commanding someone or if it's the negative tense or hearsay, et cetera. And then you're gonna have in this last column, you'll have the English translation of kind of what that roughly means to us in English. Um, so that's how to read the entry in the glossary. So I'm gonna scroll down to- On day and side though. Hyundai. Um, on that, uh, it said, ah, uh, is that ah, uh, ah, uh, ma? So yeah, it like says that. in the negative way, looks just like the regular way. Right. So, oh. um, so then in that case, it looks like the only difference is that you would hold the, the last syllable longer because you have this little colon here. Right. Um, let me see. I know that uh, Grandma Martha now teaches this part in uh, the Kiowa classes at OU. Do you have anything like, can you differentiate between that or how would you describe that? Okay, that first one is she's, we're looking at uh, past tense. Uh, if you're talking about, uh, and this is like lending something to someone, you know, um, and you you did already lend them something because it's in the past up there. You say, get all on, whatever it is, this item. It could be anything. Get yeah, all. Um, it's almost like you're saying all, all, because that's an in a nasal thing on it. But if you hear it, it's a all in context. Is that way you know what you're talking about. Um, okay. And then if you um, um, if you're loaning something to somebody right now, like this minute, somebody walked up and said they wanted something, you had it. And you're giving that to them. You're telling someone the story, and you're saying, "Get all, all, ma." Means I'm going to be lending this item to this person. So it changes just with ever whatever you're talking about. That's why we have all these to the left here to kind of make it simple on um, how to use those. That left is just saying where you are and speaking. In the middle one is the word itself, and then you're, of course what's happening. Is there a difference in pronouncing the present continuous and the negative here? No, it's it's pronounced pretty much the same way. Okay, same. okay. Mm -hmm. so it's just context then. You yeah, it's, to it's whatever you're talking about at the time. That's that's how that word's gonna come in there. And okay. it, it's funny, but that's the way Kiowa is. It just all fits where it's supposed to be. If you say it wrong, and you know the language enough, you're going to feel that, or you know that, oh, I didn't say that right. Or someone else is speaking, and you caught it, and you thought, well, they didn't quite so, say, you know. So if you're telling oh. somebody you're not going to lend them something anymore, you get, oh, uh, oh, uh, ma, get, oh, uh, uh, ma, it's just how you would say it? Um, actually, let's say uh, you asked for something, and um, I decided I didn't have that item or something like that. So I'm just going to say that I'm not going to loan that to you. I would probably put that word hon in there so you know that it's going to be negative. Hon get all on. Hon get all on. So that means you don't have it, basically. Yeah, you don't have it to loan it to somebody. Hon. So that's a good. So would we use, is that a rule? Then would we use Han like across the board if we're making something negative? If we yeah, see this, it's kind of like Hall when you're asking a question. You know, uh -huh. Hall in front of the wall are questions usually because you want to know what's going on. So you're sticking that Hall in the front. But if it's but, something that is not, then you have to somehow get that uh, meaning in there for not something that's not or negative. like Han A. Mm -hmm, something like, yeah, that's yeah. where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Hall. <laughs> 
In fact, that negative in the middle there, that word, uh, if I was telling someone that this happened, I would say, that, you know, you didn't do it. That thought is just when it happened or state of being that kind of thing. Mm, okay. Oh, cool. So it so, just kind of all comes out the way, way it's supposed to. That's how I look at it. So we have to pay attention to what we're talking about. Yeah, it's your your thought process, I guess, in this is what it is. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. -ho. So that so what I think is really interesting when when so when it, when we look at the glossary, if you have a chance to look at it, um, and I I moved to a different uh view just so we can scroll through but there are more verbs in Kiowa than there are nouns mm -hmm. and okay. I like to think that that means that Kiowa is about being um alive and it's always like we're always doing things it's about action, it's action. About, yeah. action. that's the word action right there <laughs> yeah it's about action whereas English has more nouns mm -hmm. than verbs mm -hmm. in the English language. So I think that's like such an interesting like difference between English and Kiowa is Kiowa has has like it's like everything is a verb, which means like we're always like we're talking about what is going on. And right. there there are some words here that may not necessarily be considered verbs in English, but Kiowa considers them verbs because we're doing something and we're well yeah we're always telling what to do how to do it you know so it's always going to involve a verb yeah it's it's about and so if you ever like just want to look at how you know just the sheer number of verbs it's always fun like I like kind of scrolling through this glossary and like looking at these verbs and it's like wow like there's there's some verbs there that it really gives you insight into how we think in Kiowa um, so you can tell the verbs because they're the ones that have this big long table here that goes with it. Um, so the nouns, you know, the nouns are a little different. We'll get to nouns here in a minute, but um, nouns, you know, are different based on the number of things you're talking about, but verbs are different based on what you're talking about. And also um, there's another component that goes along with the verb is you can't just use the verb by itself. You have to always use a pronoun with it because someone like the action never is just sitting there like in space just hanging out the action someone has to be doing the action so in Kiowa like we always have to include a pronoun which in the example that grandma Marthanel just gave she said yeah and so yeah is the verb I mean it's a pronoun to the verb that goes with that verb um, and so pronouns, so that's like the other like piece to this glossary is there's a companion piece to this is whenever you're looking at the verb and trying to create a Kiowa sentence, you want to make sure you're using the appropriate pronoun that goes with that verb. So let's uh, find a verb uh, that we like. Um, or uh, Grandma D, Grandma Martha, call out a verb that you like using as an example. That's a commonly used verb. And I can, I'll find it, pull it up. Common verb. A verb you hear a lot or you use a lot. Yeah, bon. 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 Okay, let's look for that. So we're in the bees. Bon. Oh, the irregular B. <clears throat> and so I'm looking at the uh, alphabetical, because it's alphabetical order, so I'm looking for bon. And somewhere here, we're getting closer. There it is, I think. 
Okay. Let me zoom in. I don't see a verb chart with this. It was up a little bit, I thought. Bon is the verb to see, saw, sighted, looked at. Did you see it up here? Oh, uh, I thought right up in there somewhere. I guess not. Well, maybe it was there and we'll just have to uh, make a note. Um, but uh, the conjugation of bon, and it's a verb two part. Um, so I wanna pull up the pronouns so we can look at how it, it's conjugated. So hande batsai ta. Does bon, when you conjugate it, when you change it, does it change or does it just stay the same? Like no matter what, what uh, your pronoun is, will it stay the same? So that's a two-part pronoun. Uh, Grandma Marthanel, do you know? I'm gonna mute off here. Um, okay, in this case here, um, you know, we use that um, real easy phrase that we use all the time where it's that de and de in bone. Uh -huh. de in bone. Um, you're using the pronoun you right there to let let whoever's listening know who you're speaking to. That pronoun is going to say who is getting the information. Uh, without that pronoun, you don't know who you're talking to. It's almost like you say, um, if you said Gabon and you stopped, well, who, you know, who, what happened there? But usually you have to have a pronoun with it and and it defines if you're talking to directly to somebody or about somebody, that third person, or about those two people or something like that, you know, or a whole crowd. So that's when, is that the, uh, oh, I just lost it. Mm. Oh, aim. So aim. It's you. They only aim and bone. And you just tell, you're talking directly to somebody, just that one person, and they know you're speaking to them because of the way you said. If you said, um, they only got bone, you're telling that person still, but you're saying you're, it was good that you saw this person over here, this other person. Oh, mm -hmm. so when you're talking about the pronoun, here's the, so in this glossary mm -hmm. in bone, it says it's a verb and it's a two part. Mm -hmm. So then you go, the the best place that I find these, and I know they're in other places, but I have a copy of the Kiowa um, course packet from the 2020 uh, summer Kiowa language class. Um, and so this is the, this is where I find all the pronoun charts is in that course packet. So they're all in the front of the, the book. It's like the third page. Um, and so with this, uh, this particular verb, we have bon and we say it's a verb two part. So then we use this chart because like Grandma Martha just said, you have to, you have to know who you're talking about and like what's happening. So talking who's, to or about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Welcome, Courtney. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Um, so so then so when you said so in that example, the Honda Honda Onde aim bone. So when mm -hmm. we say aim, it's I talking to you. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's a two-part, because mm -hmm. someone is saying something to someone else mm -hmm. or talking about someone else or something oh. else. Is there a bot bone? A what? A bot phone. Bot like, like B A T B A T? Yeah, B A H T or um it looks like it's just ba or ba or, or bait. So bait. that's the ba is 
two people? Ba is, uh, so if you said ba bong, so I'm telling all of you to look or to see it, right? What if I said ba bong? Mm -hmm. okay. And then, but if you're saying, if you use bait, then you would say all we, we all, so you say bait bong, then we're all looking like we're all we all see it or we all saw it, right? Is that the right translation? Pretty much, yeah, pretty good. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, there is a bot. Sorry, I didn't look far enough, Kathy. Hmm. It's it's we, bot is we. And if you're saying, if you're just talking about you all, like all of y'all, bait is what you would use. But if you're okay. saying we look, bot phone okay. is we look. It's like telling all of them to look at something. Almost like a command. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> all of you look at it, whatever it is. <laughs> and then you see this little uh, uh, hashtag right here. Um, so that's a placeholder, and it just means mm -hmm. that there it, you wouldn't use a pronoun in that situation. And it's usually just for the third person, he, she, mm -hmm. or it. If it's if it's an animate, animate like if it's alive, or I mean, an animate. What is that defined as? Like kind of like human type. People. Yeah. But if you're talking about a plant or inanimate, then you would use a. But so that's like the I guess a tricky thing to remember with these uh, two part pronouns mm -hmm. is this this hashtag just means that there you wouldn't say a pronoun. And you would have to pay attention to the context of the actual sentence to be able to understand like what you're actually talking about there. So like if you're saying like, I don't know, what's a good example? Like uh, he looked at the birds. I don't know. How would we translate that sentence? Uh, he looked at the birds. Or he saw birds. So uh, let's see. Okay, good, they'll get born. It's happening yeah. right now. Just right now. So is this uh, not accurate then? You would use yeah. Well, you're saying birds, so you pluralized it. Oh, say, okay. If there was two birds, I guess you could say a bone, a bone, the a sound, the e, a, e. Oh, right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. A, a bone. But if it was there were a bunch of birds, like a whole bunch in the sky flying, it'll say hey, that's what he saw. It's what he or she saw or it saw. So would it be, would you say guto, guto, bon, without a pronoun in that case? Well, it depends on, are you look, we're looking at one bird or two or three? If we're looking at one bird, like one if bird. I saw, if yeah. he is so talking say, about, he saw like a hawk. It. Well, you sound, you'll change your bird, um, your noun too, because um, a while ago we had birds, remember? And now we just got one bird there. So you have to change it because you just got one thing they're talking about. <laughs> oh. Melody. Hyundai. You, saw, you saw a red bird. You saw a red bird. Uh, so let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, a goodle a bump. For use, right? Hot soha. I saw a red bird. Is that what you're saying? I saw a red bird. Or I was saying you saw, but if I'm talking about me, I guess I would say uh, is bird, bird would be an animal, right? Or is bird considered a plant? Animal. Go, go, though. Yeah, go, 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 go
where I saw a red bird. <laughs> right, Hansel? Right. Yeah, and it could be uh, if that's your last name. I mean, you're talking about seeing a person <laughs> with that last name. <laughs> but you saw him, you saw him or her. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Great. 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 Uh, uh. Good one. <laughs> oh. Um, let's see. So okay, let's talk about nouns because you kind of touched on nouns a little bit. Um so going back to the glossary, um so what's really interesting in Kiowa is uh, like Grandma Marthanel just said, um, it depends on how many of something you're talking about. And mm -hmm. your noun is gonna change as well as your verb and your pronoun are gonna change depending on the number of things you're talking about. So here's a, here's a sample here for um, vulture or buzzard. Um, so we have the nouns, you'll see the entries in the glossary, they'll always have the noun um, and they'll have the English uh, translation of that particular noun. And then you'll have a column for whether it's a one or two, what the Kiowa word for that is, if, if you're talking about just one or two of those. And then if you're talking about three or more, you're gonna have the Kiowa word for those. And you'll notice that in a lot of, lot of um, a lot of these, the word is the same for one or two, and then for three or more, it changes. Duh. So we have to be careful of that. <laughs> so horses would be same for one or two. Same. Mm -hmm. And then same duh, for three or more. Same good day, Bo. Same good day, Bo. Same. Sango, sing, 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 where my stuff is let's see Oops. there's say okay so say say where is it am i looking in the right place horse there's cow <laughs> there's cow right there table <laughs> Uh, Zaydle, maybe I went too far. Say, let's see. Like, T-S-E-N. Zaydle. <laughs> it's going to be T-S-E-E-N. T-S-E? E-N. We can T-S-E-N. Oh, E-N. That's right. Um, okay. Dang. I think I saw it while going. <laughs> let's see. Same, same. Go, I would go down a little bit more. Okay, that's Everything. mud. Isn't it? It's nasalized, right? Yes. Same. 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 Is nasal eyes at the end? Same? Same. Yeah. Same. Same. Oh, here it is. Okay. Right here. All right. Let me, uh, Same. Yeah. That is. this bigger. Same. Same. Okay. Here we Same. go. Same. Here's, here's horse. Same. Those nasal eyes. It's considered a animate or animal noun. Because nouns are classified as either animal nouns or uh, plant nouns. So we got to pay attention to that. Oh, okay. Hey, Tha, I'll let, uh, Grandma Martha, I'll let you talk about this real quick. Or Kathy, if you have questions. I got to take a phone call. Grandma Dorothy's calling. Okay. <laughs> okay. In this case, if uh, you said, I saw the horse, I saw the horse, <laughs> it's saying, yeah, boom. Saying, yeah, boom. Because you're talking about that one little horse there. Oh, good. And then uh, if you saw three horses out in the field, you could say sango, debo. So that, you know, you're saying debo instead of yeah, yeah. Debo. You saw one horse or now you're seeing three horses. Sango, debo. And that's just 
saying you yourself are looking at them. I saw the horse saying get home and saying go. They boom. <laughs> no, three or more. But saying hi. <clears throat> Was that saying he? Is that what you're talking about? Saying oh, yeah. Saying he? Saying he. Because it stops with that I sound. It's just nasal sound. Saying he means dog. Saying he. Maybe so it's a tagoon. The bottom down there says tagoon. And then there's that old word that's saying he. Saying he. But I think they used to call those uh, horses like little work dogs, you know? Because that's what they used to have, which is those dogs that saying did he. all the work. So they're kind of related to them, I think, so it happens. Oh. Like a beast of bird that they're, they're all work for them. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so say he is the original word for dog, for one dog. Yeah, that they used to work with, those work animals, yeah. But everybody says Segun nowadays. Yeah, now they just say Segun, Segun. Or taking a doll, three or more. That's the dogs. But there's always a connection there because in the beginning we didn't have those horses, children. We acquired them. And we acquired them from the crow. Huh? So, uh, yeah, and then everyone, I think, acquired them from the Spanish people. Huh? In the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what they said. The crows were the first to mm -hmm. obtain the horses from the Spaniards. They um, are still pretty well known to be the horse people too. Even though Comanches say they are. <laughs> <laughs> the horse people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, aho. Um, so that was Grandma Dorothy. Mm -hmm. um, she no. says hi to everyone. She's not able to get on tonight, um, but she was also wondering if anyone knows it has any updates or has heard anything from the Kiowa language program from the Kiowa tribe. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, that was her question. Um, let's see here. Okay, so did we have any other, do we have any other, uh, let's see, let's look for a plant noun. So this is the animal noun. Um, uh, what is it? Is, is rock, is rock considered a plant noun? A rock is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> rock is it's rock. a hard noun. <laughs> oh, look up TSO and see what it. Yeah. Rocky Mountains. Yeah. Wait, what happened? Oh. Call it. Oh, there's a show tie right there, aren't hey, there? Hey, look. Hmm? Hammerstone. That's cool. Uh, Yellowstone. Oh, Tomahawk. Yeah, that's cool. Are they still on? 
I think so. Uh, yeah, the no, South Star family is on. There's Angel. I'm just looking for T S O. <laughs> it's probably at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I went too far. <laughs> uh, Net coffee. Which one? So. Toys. Uh, toy. Toy. Look! Look! We have a verb for throwing rocks. I think that's hilarious. I, I love it. I think it's amazing. <laughs> Throwing rocks at someone. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Toy date. Falling or tumbling. Oh, boo. About rocks. That's an adverb. We're getting closer. Here's a red, redstone, or red rock, redstone. Um, a brick, brick house, or a house made of rocks or stone or brick. That's why I say it's kind of fun to just scroll through this glossary because it's just like so full of so much interesting information. Oh, Here we go. go. Here's your uh, your official rock. This is noun other. <laughs> noun other, see? Other, yeah. It's so rock. it's a, <laughs> it's just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and here's uh, gravel is also noun other. And so this is interesting that the the um, the word doesn't change whether you're talking about one rock, two mm -hmm. rocks, or a bunch of rocks. Um, so let's look for a noun that's a plant noun. <clears throat> There's a lot of nouns that are names. So that's something to look for is, you know, if you're looking up a name, here's a plant, um, plant plural. It's a noun that's always plural and you're always talking about three or more. So there's no singular form. Uh, let's see. <laughs> There's a, uh, a hand tool for cutting the grass. Yeah, that side. There's a plant, plant noun. So the plant nouns, let's see, let's look, this is an, a sticker for a burr. So that's something to pay attention to too, is if the noun is a, an animal noun or a plant noun. And those are just like classifications of of nouns and then you know obviously we saw that there's a other noun category and a name noun category so that's a little bit about the glossary um as far as the other types of pronouns or the pronouns that go with the different verbs is you have three-part pronouns which <laughs> is you have somebody who's a giver that you have something that they're giving and then you have a receiver of the thing that was given and then it differentiates between the animal nouns and the plant nouns um and then the two-part pronouns which the uh like linguistic term is transitive pronominals but i like two-part pronouns it seems to explain it a little better but it's like we talked about, somebody is doing something to or with someone else. Um, and then possessive and mental pronouns. Um, so these are always, um, you know, if it's something about, like if it's mine, yours, his, our, all of that. And then it'll be based on 
the type of verb, whether you're, it's a basic verb or a mental verb, which you'll see in the glossary, like you'll see the verb, whether it's a verb mental or verb basic. And so like, here's a basic um, adjective, basic. So you'll wanna look for those in the glossary. Um, and then you have basic and then mental. So based on what type of verb you're using, then you would conjugate it or use the appropriate pronoun with that verb based on if you're talking about one thing, two thing, or three or more things for possessive and mental pronouns. And then you have basic pronouns, which probably the ones that we're like, we all hear a lot in conversation is like kind of like the basic level of speech in conversation as we hear these basic pronouns a lot. Um, and then you have self pronouns also called reflexive where it's all about like the self. And then we have another classification of pronouns called to go off. So that would be, and, and you would just look for those type of verbs um, in the glossary. So you would use the corresponding pronoun based on what verb you're using and also based on what nouns you're using in your sentence, what you're talking about. So that's a, a quick overview of Kiowa grammar. Um, any questions? Or anything uh, that anyone would like to add? My other question is, does everyone have a copy of the 2022 Kiowa Student Glossary and the um, 2020 course packet from the OU Kiowa classes? If you don't have it, um, I can send an email out after uh, the session with it. It's also accessible in the Google Drive, um, either in the Kiowa Language Credentialing Study folder or in the Google Drive called Kiowa Language Resources. You mean the eight, the 900 page glossary thing? Yeah, yeah, it's the glossary is, is in the um, Kiowa uh, teacher credentialing folder that Dane shared with all of us. Right, I and printed then, it out. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's amazing. I, oh, right. I one, <laughs> one day I tried printing it and I think I got to like page 300 and then I ran out of ink and that was as far as I got. <laughs> but that's awesome. <laughs> well, I like the computer better because you can search for the word. And this way you can't search for the word. You're going to have, you know. Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's a little uh, more cumbersome. It kind of takes a little bit if you're using your paper copy, um, but it's still possible. And the the glossary, I think Dane tries to do an update at least once a year. So, you know, maybe next year based on what information he's entered in, you know, maybe we'll see another update come out. Uh. Oh, good question. Um, so, Grandma Martha, now would you be able to talk about the difference between the go, to go off uh, verbs and the mental verbs? We have a question in the chat. What's, I haven't even looked in the chat. What is the question? Um, it says, what does the go off verbs mean? And when, what are the mental ones? So what's the, uh, I guess, what's the difference? Like, when would you use them? Hmm. To go off and then mental and i could pull up the glossary again yeah let's just look at that part where he's talking about are they talking about okay there's this example um so let's see yeah in the pronouns so we have the to go off mm -hmm. ones mm -hmm. here and so how, how do you explain this to your students? Like, how would you explain what a to go off yeah. verb is? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I usually call them go off, but it's in there like that. 
Um, okay, it has to do with that verb I, I, because it says right there in the old thing. So if you ever get that in your conversation, then you would use these types of pronouns with it. Um, in that first block there to the left, if you were saying the sentence, I went, I went, get I. See, that's how you would pull that together. Get I, and people know that you're saying you went somewhere. You didn't say where, but you said you went. And then several of us went, so you'd say um, A to I. And, and again, you're not even saying where you went or anything like that. You're just saying that you went somewhere. A to I. Uh, you could throw in a name if you wanted to tell them where you were actually going to be. And then Bob I is um, let's go. Let's go. It's almost kind of like it has like a Bakoba. Bakoba. Let's go now. But here it's you just using that um, we we sound. So bot I. And then bot I means you go. Like you're giving them command. You said go, go right now. And then you two, mon I, you two go now. Next one over there, you all is bot I, because that's three or more people you're talking to. <laughs> and then um, that usually the third person is what I call it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, he, she, or it went. And then the, the, those two people are talking about those two. Ain't I, that means there's at least two of them that went together. And then they, you could say, um, ain't I, or yeah, I, yeah, I. So it really has a lot to do with that one verb, I. You're going to have to change those, what we were looking at earlier at the top, some of those other pronouns, to fit your sentence. And like I say, you can add anything in there. I was just kind of giving the basic just the way they have it written here. But you could also put a uh, location or anything you want to tell somebody. You can add it in here. Uh -huh. like, so, that first, like that first one, for example, I'll just give it all the way to the left now that, that I went. Um, uh, Carnegie, yeah, get I. Carnegie, yeah, get I. That means I went to Carnegie. So you can put a lot of things in there and, and tell a whole story you want to. Oh, so you mean it's not Carnegie Doll? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Carnegie Doll either. <laughs> I lived there all my life and I never heard that. <laughs> Carnegie, yeah, get I. Yeah, I went, I went to Carnegie. I went to Carnegie. <laughs> Does um uh let's do with I that verb eyes it's it's just weird by itself seems like Hyundai inside though. Oh. Um so this verb um you translated it as like so I know we call it like to go off, but I like how you used the example of went somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or so I to me that helps me like it makes a little more sense. Um what um I would say if I instead of saying to go off, I would have said to be going, to be going, or something like that. So you kind of know that you can use it like that. Ah, oh, okay. Somebody going somewhere again. Oh, awesome! That helps. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I wanted to ask about this, like when you would use, if you have an example of when you would use the they form. So like the eight, that's for that uh plant noun, right? Yeah, like so. The, how would how would um, I use that? Like, would it be uh, if you said um eight go eight I eight go eight I? Let's pretend that you're talking about horses got spooked and they started running. Eight go I. You know, you're talking about all of them, all of that. Oh, group. okay, okay. And like then if, if you're uh, talking about um, people. To that, yeah, I, yeah, I. Anything to do with going somewhere or moving. So that means they all they all went like mm -hmm. all of them went somewhere. Yeah. Went off. <laughs> yeah, they all went somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome.
this, hopefully that helps uh, with the question. I think the other question was on the mental. Oh, yeah, well, uh, can you question. explain um, how how we def we should define or understand what a mental verb is and a mental pronoun? I always kind of look at those like um, when I think I don't even think of it as mental. It's kind of like to me they're um, in like a uh, kind of like a possessive meaning is what it is uh like over there to the left that basic verb is my and the mental is for me it's always something that kind of has to do with uh you in that line you know um Dave go Nadal remember that one Dave oh. Nadal those are my relatives it's not your relatives it's my relatives and then I can identify them no, no. Um, the first one is probably could be describing one one person that you're talking about, um, like your sister or your brother. Thawing dog. Thawing dog. That's my brother. I don't female, so I'm saying it like that. So it, uh, that's why it always seems to me like it's something that you're talking about that you're involved in it. And then you can change it to the rest of them down there and it all kind of fits that same way, but it has to have those certain pronouns to make it fit, I guess, because it's not going to sound right if you use some weirdo one over there and try to talk about something. They'll say, what did she say? Or what, did, what are they talking about? That's me. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. So that first one's pretty easy to explain. The the mental yeah. verbs isn't me, that um hagida is a mental verb mm -hmm. like like a uh, ha, ha like how you understand so like to understand. Yeah, it's almost kind of like well I don't know it's hard to say fit it in in an explanation but. <laughs> in Thai words, you have to say, say it like they came out. Okay, let's see what we can use something else. Or what like, other one shall we? Yeah. Hi, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And on, hi, Gida. Like, uh, uh, ha, ha. Um, uh, oh my gosh. If I'm asking, like, do you understand? Ha, so on, yeah. Ha. Yeah, and hi, Gida. Yeah. 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 Yan hai ha yan hai and then I would answer ha ya hai ya. Yeah, I understand. And that's this one right here, because you're talking about for me, <clears throat> so it's a mental. Oh yeah hai, oh yeah hai And then the question when you're asking is yan. And mm -hmm. so that's you're asking like for you, like do you yeah. do understand? You know? Yeah, do you know or understand? Oh yan hai because that yin is sounded in there. When you say yourself, it's it's nasal, it's ha ya hai ge. Ha ya hai ge da. And then the get, I've also heard get hai ge da. Mm -hmm. Like we or us. All of us, yeah. Three All of us more, understand. Three or more, I guess. Um, I was going to look for another uh, um, a mental verb that we could look at. Can you think of any? Or is there any? Let me try to look one up. Oh, here's one that's interesting. Sound of walking. <laughs> that's a cool that's a cool word <laughs> the sound of walking huh i guess like footsteps when your feet your footsteps are making a sound mm -hmm. so oh, let's see. Your foot and then phone yeah to be making that noise sound of the noise let's see so yeah. how, how would you pronounce this and then each of these conjugations <laughs> that first one is on phone yeah 
on on phone. Okay? You can hear someone walking. Yo. <laughs> Um, on phone. On phone, yeah. On phone, yeah. Mm -hmm. On is the food and phone, yeah, is the noise of it or the sound of it. Okay. That first one passed is um, on, on phone. That means you just heard the sound of them walking. And then on phone, yeah, is Somebody's walking right then and there, same time you said it. On phone off, <laughs> on, on phone off means in the future you're gonna hear the sound of them walking. <clears throat> on phone is that command. <laughs> phone. And maybe <clears throat> on phone golf, it's a golf sound. <laughs> The second one was yeah, and that bottom one is go. And the way I look at it, when you're asking a question, ho yan hai yeah, that to me is a positive thing. And ho yan hai go is I don't know. So to me, those are like positive and negatives. I don't know why they just stick to my head. Yeah, and go. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> distinction. I, I never thought of it like yeah, that. Yeah, would be like positive and go is negative. Uh -huh. oh, okay okay yeah I'm gone. did you catch that kathy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did i did i'm over here trying to <laughs> differentiate the two oh, yeah so that can't. last one you'd say honan on phone golf that means you can't hear the sound of the walking oh and you used the han again the the hon. yeah hon. Hon. it almost has to go with that golf that hon is not. It, so, uh, Hande Ibsai thought if oh. if we're talking about like say I'm telling a story about I heard some loud footsteps or something. Yo, <laughs> that's what I said. Well, go yo. You could I, say uh, right now. You're using a present when you say that. You could uh -huh. say Hande on on phone, yeah. Oh. I hear the sound of someone walking, you know that. And you didn't even hear that. <laughs> but so so we don't have so in this particular verb, it doesn't like we can still tell a story using we just don't have a particular like we don't have to use the storytelling tense with it. We can just use it as we were talking. Well, you could say on phone, yeah, hail. You put the hail on the end of that second one up there. Oh, okay. You could that's storytelling. You could say it in that mode like that. Because you want you weren't there to know that, but you're you heard it in the story or somebody telling you. Okay. So that hail, that H E L made the sound of what Uh-huh. You remember okay. the hail? hail. <laughs> I, I feel like uh we need to add some like keywords okay. here to this little chart, like. We should add, like, I in my notes, I would add in parentheses, like Han for the negative yeah. and then Hadel mm -hmm. for the hearsay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's in some it. of our notes, but it's not on everything here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool. So, um, so I guess like the mental verb, it's kind of hard to uh, define it in English. You kind of have to like listen to some of the different verb definitions and then you kind of you get a sense of what it means but because it's a very kiowa way of talking <laughs> right it's so, a, don't think english it's got to be kiowa thought <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh and it, it's so interesting to think about like that we have that type of a verb and and uh so it kind of makes like kicks, makes my mind like oh okay i gotta really like focus on what does this mean <laughs> let's see um i wonder if there's another i'm kind of curious oh forgiving to forgive <laughs> is a mental verb too <laughs> yeah. on oh on uh how do you say this on oh, on oh. 
Antro Tama. Antro Tama. Antro Tama. Grandma D, how would you say that? Antro Tama. Uh -huh. Oh. That means and, you kind of feel, you know, you, you feel for somebody if they're going through something. Is that something, is that also a word we would use in our prayers? Like, uh, forgive us? Yeah, the aunt or Tom. That's what you would say if you're asking them to forgive you for whatever you did or said or something. This one right here. Like in the Lord's prayer. Yeah, yeah, the aunt or Tom. Oh, Forgive us our trespasses. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, in the chat, uh, the Zotai family said uh, it's kind of like the mental verbs are kind of like thinking about or intellectual verbs, like it takes a mental capacity. Yeah, so. some, something that uh, you're just going to. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So the, again, with the negative yeah, thought, thought, we have the we have ma and then ma, right? So the, the difference is the ma. Yeah, that's a good point. But that's the only difference is the ma and ma. And so you would say, like, if you say you're not gonna free you. <laughs> <laughs> you would say uh han uh let's see and then a mental oh, uh, yeah you said what did you say you said um but like let's see uh, if i'm talking about me um, that's a han again in front of all that last yeah, one. you looked on top of that page before it had unforgiving oh okay let's see on top of, right here oh there we go right here oh he mm -hmm. Um, okay, so how would you say this for unforgiving? Unforgiving. Uh, hey, hey. That's the oh, same thing as okay. that hon, you know, it said, hey, he doesn't have any, <laughs> doesn't have any forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, so so could you hon use it hon either hon way? Hon. Like, could we say hon, uh, now I have to think of like uh, hon, uh, let's see, for me. Where is that? Uh, uh, could I say no? No. Or would I say na or nya? Mm. For if I'm saying like I will not forgive. Well, that's uh, pretty mean. <laughs> that's pretty I mean. know. <laughs> <laughs> How rude. <laughs> uh, like, I'm you like if you said it like that's written up there that you just went over that hang up there. Uh huh. Um, Ontota hang a da. You'll say, I don't have that in me, you know? <laughs> or, ah, da, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any forgiveness to give me. But how would I say that if I'm using this form of the verb? The, the hon, 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 hon. I would, that, that's where I would probably use that hon in front of it. And I would say, hon get on to I'm not going <laughs> to forgive that person. That's what you say. Hon, <laughs> Yeah, on, on on so it's han and then the pro the pronoun and then the verb. yeah yeah okay. yeah that person yeah so that's our sentence structure there for this one right here no now could uh what if i was telling a story about it could i use that hadel as well and then if so what form would i use this form and just add hadel to it like um well, he will yeah. not forgive uh, are you going to not forgive or forgive? Or to, no, to forgive. Like if I'm talking about how okay. someone was forgiving. Um, you could say, aunt or tan hail. Aunt or tan hail. Okay, because you're talking about the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means someone forgave somebody. It, okay. Aunt or tan hail. Like I heard that in a story like that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, this is good because um, it's very, uh, we got to pay attention to our context. <laughs> yeah.
Awesome. Uh, all right. So do we feel like we have a good grasp of the mental and the uh, go off verbs and pronouns? Oh, it doesn't work. Go off. Go, go. go away. Go, go. go pronouns. I like what it what was your definition? Uh to to go going going. going somewhere? Yeah, going somewhere, somewhere, yeah. To me, that kind of when I read all those, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I thought oh, I was yeah. gonna go off on somebody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's that's it's kind of like our uh, our newer understanding. Maybe we should uh, ask Dane if he could add an explanation here of maybe yeah, like maybe just a little more info in it, yeah. Yeah, going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I just go up to somebody and go, yeah. Hey, no. <laughs> go off on. <laughs> yeah. To, I. <laughs> to be going. To be going. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see here. Well, that was a lot of fun. It, it gets complicated really quickly. So we got to yeah. pay close attention. <laughs> <I'm> trying. <laughs> and, and this is helpful because, you know, if we understand the basics of, of Kiowa grammar, then it'll help us when we're trying to like Be translate a sentence or, or we're trying to create a sentence, you know. Oh, I mean, in conversation. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start a I mean, be talking in a conversation. Oh, well, uh, let's see here. Um, so I wanted to, um, we have about 15 minutes left. So do we want to um, attempt to listen to that Kiowa Proverbs recording and see if we can decipher any of it? Or do you want to talk about strategies for teaching Kiowa to middle school students? What would you all prefer? Is that proverb? <laughs> Proverbs. I'm, I'm all about giving people choices, you know, like I'd rather do what everyone, what everyone wants to do. Okay. We don't listen. Mm -hmm. We don't try with Oh, okay. So let me pull that up. Um, and let's see if I can remember Kiowa Proverbs. Uh, let's see. There it is, 241. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so with this, um, what we want to try to do is try to uh, translate the, um, let me share my screen. Let me pull, let me uh, get my document here. And let's see, when did we, I think it was a while ago that we talked about it. Well, I'll just start a new document here. Okay. So, uh, Proverbs. KCP uh, number 241. Okay. Now, I think we have some. Uh, I know I have some notes somewhere. I have to find my notes really quick. Of, um, I'll turn on the recording and then. I'll look for my notes and then we can uh we'll play the first uh speaker. Do you do you want to start by translating the prayer? Because I think uh some of you mentioned that the prayer was really um helpful in that recording as well. Sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna press play and we'll see how far we get. And we can continue this next week too, is because I wanted to make sure we have time next week to listen to this because that Kiowa Proverbs uh, tape recording, like our, our mentor said, is uh, very important for us to, to know. 
So I think it's worth our time to sit and try to transcri transcribe it. Okay. Ah, uh, cool. The Kiowa Culture Program on this date of January the 23rd, 1980. Mm -hmm. Those that are present here today is Lloyd Toyball, Jasper Sankadori, Yale Spotted Bird, Guy Tainpey, Hazel Boton, Esther Topai, Margaret Denko, Isabel Two Hatchet. <laughs> and the two that are not with us today are are in the hospitals and we we've been thinking about them, we've been praying for them. We hope to see them soon, well and and uh, working with us again. At this time, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, my, my brother Guy, Guy Tainpey, to give us the invocation again before we start our session. Ah, cold, darling, a kid. Gui te dosso te dosa ki te sange te ko. Ei, on ei dosa to te sunar te dosa te ko sa te hau te ko hajo te pelto ki om te ko on ko. Vi to te soim dosa to te ko kia te ko. Get high get up ko te dosa to te hon te te ko to wa ko ki ta to te ko to don ke do te. เออหายาฮอนเดดอทเฮนดอนเดหายาตุงเกเกดอเดคอมอตอไปกูเกคอมซอดเกเกเยเอมแคบฮอตอเวตอซุกอยกูเกดอมาฮอนเดเดเกเ
Okay, um, so that was kind of soft to hear. Could could you hear it? Some of it. <laughs> well, it's very difficult to hear. We talk just that way. <clears throat> I mean, it's hard for me to hear. He gets real low and soft. He starts out mm -hmm. and then he goes down. <clears throat> and that's God Tainty. <clears throat> oh. how, how do you spell his name? P-E-A-I-N-P-E-A-H. Okay. Oh. Um, the one in the hospital, that was uh, James Silverhorn. He uh, came down with cancer about that time. Oh, wow. He passed in 81. Hmm. Um, so maybe we should start with the first speaker and maybe come back to the prayer, the opening prayer later. Let me put the timestamp on here. Um, five minutes. Wait one second. Okay, so let me press play for the first speaker. <clears throat>
think I can't make things unstable. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you able to hear the uh, recording? That was your your father, right, Grimaldi? Oh. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we can uh, translate the first thing he says. So I'm going to rewind it. We'll see if we can get a couple sentences. Huh. Let's see, go back to five minutes and 11 seconds. Uh, cool. On e go a go. Okay. Can someone repeat the words that he said? He said on go. Hey, I got that one. <laughs> I heard that one. On <laughs> go, and then <clears throat> he said on key, and then. On key. On key in the past. Mm -hmm. On key. And then Goik Yakomba, I mm -hmm. think. I will people. Ah, go. On e. Dong Don't get that language. Don't get that. Mm-hmm. Well, he's talking about the language. Okay. I'm going to um, share my whole screen so that you can mm -hmm. see everything that I'm doing here. So here's the recording and here's um, where I have the notes page here. Hopefully you all can see that. Yes. And I am I am not the fastest person with uh, Parker McKenzie. So I'll have to go back and transcribe it later. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm just typing out phonetically what, what I hear. <laughs> so he said, Anko, Anki, Boik Yakomba, Dong Yak Yada. Okay. Go, Dong Yak. Go, Yakomba. Go, Dong Yak. Go, Dong Yak. Kawa language. Kawa language. Sounded like you said, uh, well, let me, let me rewind it 10 seconds. Go. On E. Go. Go. Don't get that though. Go, don't get. Go, don't get. Go, don't get. Go, do Is that is that? I don't know if he said go go or ado. Oh, ado. I don't know what she said. You got. <clears throat> Let's see. Go ado. Go don't go. Go go what? Oh, is it ado? Okay, let's hear the next part. Yeah. Bye, Gasol. 
क्या पल तो है क्या था पल तो So they thought as Kai was, I guess. Oh, I'll write that down. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. What is the soy, Martinelle? They knew how to think. I think her time ran out. Uh oh. For the Zoom. Oh, yeah, she, I, I don't see her on anymore. She must have had to jump off. <clears throat> um, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, there she is. She's coming back in. <laughs> her she Zoom must be acting up. up. Yeah, the internet. Um, let's play that last 10 seconds. Hi, Grandma Martha. We saw that you got kicked out and you came back. Um, so my, my battery went down. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh oh. Well, get back on. Okay. Well, we'll uh we'll stop here in a, a minute, but we'll play this last uh like fifteen seconds here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. 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 Grandma D had a question for you, Grandma Martha. Okay, yeah, I'm on it. The belt is all. Um, it's to think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Be a pale to soul good, get pale to high get off. They knew how to get pale to soul, I guess, means they knew to start thinking. Yeah, yeah, you think. put your uh, brain, but you turn your brain on, that's what it is. So start, you know, to think. Yeah. And they knew how to start thinking. Yeah, I to think, I guess. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah, I to high, get I think is what it says. Yeah, you know how to think. Oh. And then he said, uh, what's this last, uh, this next, he said, Gyahan de Haya, yep. Bay <clears throat> day oh. yeah. it's straight, isn't it? Yeah. Bay the yeah. the the right way. Mm -hmm. the straight. Yeah, so they so you could think about it the right way. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, oh boy, though. Real. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, though. It means it's real. Yeah, oh boy, though. Oh. 
I'm really? just going to start separating out the phrases because it's easier to catch your translations. Yeah. Okay, let me go back like five seconds. This is the fun part about transcribing is we listen to the same thing over and over. <laughs> but eventually we get it. Yeah, get all of it too. We keep listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The he he say han ah. Han ah sa ho da da. Yeah, ho da. Han ah so so ho da. How would you uh ha so on a thong yeah? How would you translate that? Oh. What's a negative? <laughs> They're not doing something. <laughs> it's almost kind of like they're not spoiled or something. You know what I mean? That they're they're, re, they're that re means re that you won't go wrong, I guess. Yeah, the mm -hmm. wrong way. Because he says it's real up there. So it's a hold on, so hold on, so hold on, so hold on. Not so hold. So hold is uh, you ruin something. You mess something up. Yeah. It's, or, or if you got hurt in the accident or something like yeah, that. So, that so. Yeah, so something happened. But anyway, the, I said they won't go the wrong way. That sounds good. They won't go the wrong way. Are you saying, Hande uh, Saitha, are you saying uh, so or saw? Like A U? Saw. saw. Like the S A W. S A W sound. S A U in our case. Okay. Yeah, Anna saw hold on. I'll say H O T E to make your phonetics. Okay. All right. Hold on. Is it hoped? H O T E. Hold on. Hold on. H O T E. Hold on. Okay. Okay, let me go back like five seconds. Or it could be maybe it wouldn't wouldn't be heard or something like that, you know. Something like that. It means so that you don't go the wrong way or yeah, you you uh well, you won't get messed up. Time you know? to say. You'll watch your step. Yeah. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if we can uh, catch it. Oh, go on. Oh, yeah. Get by the door. Did he say say me? Say me? Don't, don't, don't. Don't yeah. Don't yeah. Don't yeah. Mm-hmm. Words. Language. Oh. The words, you know, the I guess the a the words of wisdom is what I was trying to say. Say like, don't get on. <clears throat> don't get what is it? He said, ain't the hon dig your door or something. He's including. Okay. Yeah, we let's uh activities or situations or whatever. Okay. Let's uh play it one more time. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 How, how do you uh say say is that the right like is that same no, a? He said he said day aim instead of that same a it's oh day aim. Day aim. Day aim. I thought he said same same day. No. Same day. <laughs> day aim. <laughs> They am don't get get on dog yeah. Um, is it om or om like a u m? A u m. Um. Okay. Made. A u m. Um. Da yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Beautiful. how would you translate that? Um. Day aim. That aim is kind of saying something like um, um, that way, that aim. Uh, the words don't get. Don't get. The words are made. Yeah, um, the words are made. Or to say that's the way the words were made. Uh, referring previously to. Uh -huh. well, honey, and so hold up though or you won't go wrong uh -huh. <clears throat> oh and then he said that yeah oh boy though uh -huh. sure. yeah, oh boy. <clears throat> that's really interesting so yeah. far just so far it's adding proverbish <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah very, very <laughs> official yeah, yeah. <laughs> We quote quote him. <laughs> yeah, you have a quote. Well, that that's kind of I think that's one of our uh, goals is to transcribe this and translate it into uh, both of those uh, orthographies so that people can you know Kiowas can see it mm -hmm. and you learn it. See it, see it, it. So when they made these tapes, they didn't have a transcri transcription with it. Um. So. Grandma Martinelli, I, I know you probably know more about this, but like from what I've heard and just from reading that one uh, paper, the Kiowa Road mm -hmm. or the Kiowa Way, um, they started out with some funding. They had some kind of funding, a grant or something. And yeah, so they cool. um, they were able to have a transcriptionist in the beginning that yeah. used a typewriter. But mm -hmm. then as you, the years went on, like this is in 1980 that they're recording this one. Yeah. And it kind of stopped after a certain point. Do you do you have any um, info on that part? Not really. I, I know that's kind of what happened, though, that they quit having someone who could put, you know, the description of what they were talking about. So consequently, that's what we're just hearing it rather than seeing it somewhere. Sounds like a pattern, you know. Well, uh, and when and I think I just, came across it, their, their concluding session, I think one or two of them mentioned that their funding ran out. And so that was their final meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh. They, they, they said this in Kiowa. And they're, wow. they're concluding their final meeting. <clears throat> so, I'm going by that. They ran out of funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hope that's what happened. So 50 years yeah. from now, somebody's going to be trying to transcribe what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. No, we ran out of funding. So we ran out of funding. <laughs> well, but 
this is something that needs to be done, but it's, it's we all know it, but it's not being done. So there you are. Uh -huh. oh. They'll have oh. this. They'll have all these, and then no one's gonna know what they said. Uh -huh. Oh, <clears throat> that's like uh to me one of my biggest fears is someday Kiowa somewhere will listen to those and have no clue what they're saying, no. No. and that's like what what we want to prevent. Well, oh. we we'll just have about five years. Oh, better hurry. All the speakers are going mm -hmm. That's right. oh. so you have less yeah so anyway yeah so it's i even appreciate that's why i appreciate all your interest i just wish that there were more you know who wouldn't who knew what they were saying mm -hmm. so oh. they're very deep because he comes to the phrase that i was going to ask martha now what he meant was I think he said, oh, more con or something like that. Oh, more con? Is that what he said? I don't know if that's what he said. Oh. I can't, my memory is very bad. Okay. Oh, well, I have to hear it, I guess, but yeah, I know what that means. Oh, more con. I don't know what he, if that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And then he was saying, if you had that trait, uh, uh, and all day, uh, or the you be held in high esteem if you if you have that uh, virtue, which I thought was interesting. I'm um, I think he said, was it I'm um, or something like that? But it sounded like it would be a special person there yeah that's it yeah <clears throat> people would think well of you in at other words end. yeah at the end you'd be if, known you, well if you had the those the quality that he was talking about yeah and we all we all i think i think it's omar khan i think he said i don't know it's not like he said i'm oit all like T A U. Oh. Yeah, oh, maybe a oh. Yeah. Oh. We'll become that or something. Is what it sounds like. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Person. Okay, where are oh. we? <laughs> now he's going to talk about that child. If it's a child, talk to that child. Oh, yeah. He says, uh, like, well, thunder, the kids. Yeah, even if it's a child, speak to him. Yeah, he says, uh, you Don't tell them to listen. <clears throat> you tell the child to sit and to listen. listen. Mm -hmm. And then he says that, I mean, I'm just going by what the idea is that. Yeah. In, in in the future, that child will 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 recall or reflect on what he heard mm -hmm. and become a good person. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he didn't say that, but that's Kai. Well, I'm just trying to tell you. Oh. Anyway. <clears throat> the context. <laughs> yeah, but that you know that's on ahead. Just a few. Sentences of where we stopped. Yeah, it's, it's not very long to the end of that. Do you want me to play one more? Let's, let's listen to one more. Okay, okay let's let me uh, share my screen again. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let me go back a couple seconds to catch this uh, when he was talking about the words. Yeah, oh, my God. Oh, no, so, oh, no, 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 o
Good. It's, a, it's so he, amazing and it's good. Did he say me He said a word in between. me That's all he said. It's amazing. Did he say ba? Mm -hmm. Sounded like he said ba. 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 Some. Ba in this case is some other words, I guess. Referring to the words. <clears throat> We're back yet again. Again, yeah. So some of the words are good. Oh, it's well. Why don't you play a few more words, and then we'll see. Get the uh, meaning. Okay. Let me rewind it. Listen, welcome. Oh, no. So on I got a call, I don't know any of the key. Okay, that was a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go back to the Gasami. Don't get the arm down. Get on me. Ah. Get back. Hey, I'll take it. Get back at the town. So, get on me. Hey, I'll take it. Hey, I'll take it. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's see. Get on me. Ah. Get back. Hey, I'll take it. Yep, I'll take it. So, get away, though. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 How's it go after? Yeah. 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 Think about it. Mm-hmm. When you think about it. <laughs> and when you think about the words, it's referring to the words. Mm -hmm. When you think about the words, they're what, real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh boy, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I have to take off. Okay. Oh, I hope Kathy will. Uh... We'll, we'll stop here in just a second, but um, oh. the recording will be posted online, so you'll be able to hey, reference it. Hey, got him all bound up. Ha, hey, got him all bound up. And Melody, you remember <laughs> on Sunday you were going to do that song? Ha, oh. that's my homework. <laughs> yeah, that's your, for that Christmas. Mm -hmm. The one oh. that George Corridor sang that he said Zodai sang, and you heard him sing it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I've been uh, 
I got the time stamp, and so I'm trying to figure out the tune. Oh. So we'll see if I get it right. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know the tune either. <laughs> I've never heard it. Well, we'll, uh, we'll hmm. see if we can uh, figure it out on Sunday. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you? Uh, let's see. Uh, let me play uh, this last sentence again to see if we get it. I don't think you put the tone. So, go boy, though. Did he say? So, the old boy, though. Is it saw? Mm hmm. So, the old boy, though. And what does that translate to? That's uh, again, that's the real thing. That's the way it is. It's really that way. So, the old boy, though. It's really that way. And that one up there where you have. 628 mark that this the, that whole thing means today in Hondeki today. Oh. And I'll go back and I'm gonna um uh transcribe it into the Parker McKenzie um so that we'll have both. Mm -hmm. Because uh, like like we did some of the transcriptions oh yeah yeah For, like yeah. last year when we did like the Mc, modified McKenzie and then the uh, phonetic and then the the literal translation and the free translation mm -hmm. so that'll be uh my homework but uh mm -hmm. i think we only got uh let's see he goes until eight minutes into it and we still got a minute and a, uh, a minute and a half <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh but it's it's nine o'clock so we should probably uh stop there i guess um but uh but yeah that's uh i think this is a really important uh recording to make sure we get you know get down and make sure we all learn it <laughs> we know what it says <sighs> so i appreciate you taking the extra time tonight um uh let's see courtney are you still with us Oh. Uh, Courtney, would you be able to uh, be outside for us? Oh, be outside. Da hama entare ahodak i it age dak i. On the tide of day, get the data. And the Sahita or I can't eat them. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you're, hope you're doing good and hope everyone stays healthy. Me too. Everybody too. Everybody else too. Oh, <laughs> well, this was fun. So, yeah. Hey, uh, oh. We'll, con we'll continue. Oh. We'll continue uh, on Wednesday, and then on Sunday we're gonna uh, do some Christmas. Uh, listen to our Christmas oh. recordings. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I'm glad we got to start the translation. Ha, oh, I know it's, it's been on a to-do list for a while, so appreciate everyone's time. <laughs> I heard about how. All right, well, have a good evening. You too. Good night. Good night.